Gators Breakdown, join Gators Breakdown Plus. Starting at $3 a month, get access to unique episodes, plus a blog, chat room, giveaways, shout-outs, and more. Gators Breakdown Plus is furthering the interaction with fans and listeners like you. Head to gatorsbreakdown.supportingcast.fm to join Gators Breakdown Plus today. Gators Breakdown, because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. And that never dull moment comes in the world of recruiting this week for the Gators. The Gators Breakdown podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters, and you can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. And there it is. Gators get a new commit. Speedy wide receiver Isaiah Bond commits to the Gators, and that's the news this week. We'll cover recruiting as I bring on Swamp 24-7's Blake Alderman, and uh, we'll get into everything recruiting, but of course, starting with the commitment of wide receiver Isaiah Bond. But look, June's coming up, and recruiting as we knew it before the pandemic will be in full force. (laughs) Recruits from all around the country will be hitting Gainesville for – you know, starting at June 1st, I mean, as soon as the calendar turns to June, recruiting is going to get back in full force. And, uh, man, it's going to be going to be a crazy time to cover recruiting. And that's why we'll bring Blake Alderman on to get his thoughts on the new commit, some new targets for, for the Gators, uh, and that crazy, crazy June uh, that is coming up. So uh, announcement two, this will not be the only episode this week. Will Miles will join me. Uh, live Tuesday night on YouTube, and we'll do our YouTube Q Q and A session. Uh, I had some uh, I asked the YouTube community, uh, you guys, you you uh, very faithful uh, and consistent uh, guys that show up there and watch on YouTube. Wanted to pay you back with the Q and A session, so we got that coming up. Some really really good questions uh, there for the offense, Emory Jones, and you know what uh, maybe what could bleed over uh, from the heavy passing attack. Uh, from uh, Kyle Trask, Kadarius Tony, Kyle Pitts, all that stuff in that offense. Will any of that carry over into the new offense? That was kind of one question to ask there. So we'll get into that. That's the big one there. Uh, so, um, but plenty, plenty submitted. And uh, Will Miles uh, will join me later this week uh, there to, to, to do the U- YouTube uh, Q&A episode. And before we get to Blake, remember you can find Gators Breakdown at news4jacks.com slash Gators Breakdown. You can find all the past Gators Breakdown episodes there. Go back and listen to our Josh Pate interview from last week. Really, really good stuff with him. And remember, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. It really, really helps us out here on Gators Breakdown or listen to us, listen to us on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget the new GatorsBreakdownMerch.com. You can get some Gators Breakdown t-shirts there with all kind of good traditions and, and, and the motto because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. All that good stuff there at GatorsBreakdownMerch.com. I'm now joined by Swamps 24-7 Blake Alderman to hit the world of recruiting and speedy commitment here. A wide receiver Isaiah Bond commits to the Gators. And look, 24's, uh, 24-7 sports soul rankings have him uh, has a four-star wide receiver from Buford, Georgia, the 237th ranked player in the country. He's a three-star on the 24-7 sports composite. Put out Saturday that he was going to announce on Sunday. Ends up announcing for the Gators. Miami thought to be in good shape at one time. He's got some big-time offers from the likes of Alabama and Georgia. But in the end, the speedster picks the orange and blue. Blake, was this a surprise that it was coming about? I mean, he on Saturday says, hey, I'm committing tomorrow. And there he goes committing to the Gators. Well, you know, there was some surprise, but there wasn't at the same time. You know, I get a call from Steve Wolfong, who's the recruiting director at 24-7 Sports on Friday night. And, you know, he was telling me that, you know, basically this was trending that way, um, that, you know, Florida was in a really good position. I think that, you know, sure, Dan Mullen, Billy Gonzalez, the track record that Billy Gonzalez has had of putting guys like Kadarius Tony, you know, that's a new position you can sell now. You know, you don't have the, uh, you know, the Percy position anymore. You have the, the Tony position. So, you know, they deserve a lot of credit. But, you know, Corey Bell was a guy that was also really involved in this. He's uh, an assistant director of player personnel um, in Florida's recruiting office. Uh, you know, he was the one who saw the guys, you know, he saw Bond's film. He's the one who brought it to the coaching staff. He's the one that really pushed for him, um, you know, and once that kind of trickled up to, the, you know, Billy Gonzalez and Dan Mullen, you know, they really zeroed it in. They they pitched, you know, obviously 
top 10 in academics, top 10 in football. That's, you know, one of their big pitches, you know, just the brand of what Florida can do for players, you know, both on and off the field. Um, you know, you, uh, again, you circle back to, you know, the production he's had at his position. Um, and I'm talking about Billy Gonzalez's production there. Um, and you look at just how they used Kadarius Tony in different ways, you know, that kind of speed. I mean, Isaiah Bond, uh, yesterday, Rusty Manziel at our, at our Georgia site on the network was out at a, you know, a, a track meet where he ran, I, I believe it was a 10, 10, four, eight in the hundred meter dash. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, he's a quick guy. He's coming with speed. He can take the top off of defense. Um, you know, that's the kind of speed that you can work on different things. You know, you can work on teaching him how to work the field. You can teach him on, you know, different parts that come from, you know, being a wide receiver, but speed is something you can't teach. And that's something obviously that Florida is getting with him. So it was a big get for Florida um, coming out of that commitment. He's talking about still taking some visits. He's had official visits set up to Texas. Um, Alabama was another one. Um, you know, he's had some visits set up, so you know he's still planning to take those visits for now. But for right now, you know, he's committed to Florida. Um, you know, you always want to take those commitments from those speedy guys. You know, I'm sure Florida will, you know, at least try to, you know, talk him out of taking some visits or maybe taking them at a later date or you know something to that effect. You know, you never want a guy that's committed to you taking visits, but you know, I mean. Speed, man. Like you said, you know, speed is what you get with him, and that's something where Florida's offense can, you know, can really use a guy like that. And and you know, I, really good get for Florida. Yeah, and Blicky play both sides of the ball too, wide receiver and corner. Georgia and yeah. Alabama were recruiting him as a as a defensive back. Okay, yeah. So there we go. Six Florida foot, recruiting him at wide receiver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Six foot one seventy five, and you look at the film outruns coverages and outruns angles. <laughs> so, uh, and as you mentioned, that speed was. On, on display, that 10.48 and 100 meter dash. And you, and you mentioned selling him that Kadarius Tony role in the offense, but look, we know he's not as shifty, and not many people are <laughs> as shifty as Kadarius Tony. Uh, sure, there, that's that, hard to that, do. Yeah, yeah. And that ability that he showed this past season, but he also showed the ability to get behind defenders with that, that route running from the outside and the slot. So, as you mentioned, Blake, first it was the Percy position. Now this staff can sell the Tony <laughs> position. Uh, as you mentioned, everybody involved here, Mullen, Gonzalez, um, Corey Bell, are selling that Tony position with Bond. But, look, they're, they're probably – they, they may want to call it the Tony position, but it's a little different with the speed that he brings to the table. Absolutely. But I think that's just the cool thing now. You know, like I said before, <laughs> it used to be the Percy position, but now you've got someone, you know, a little bit more – uh, you know, newer that can register with some of these guys because you see a guy like Kadarius Tony, who, I mean, I, I'll put myself in that category. I didn't see him being a first round pick heading into the 2020 season. He obviously right. put in that work, and that's that's just kind of the production that you can sell to some of these guys. You know, look, this guy wasn't getting that kind of buzz, and look, look what we did with him as a staff. And you know, that could be you. You know, that's obviously something that's going to really push a lot of buttons with these kids. One more, uh, Blake, uh, here on Bond, and from our Gators Breakdown Plus member Scott Sweat, Southern Gator, in the chat room. Do you see a rankings boost uh, for, for Bond? You guys at 24-7, your sole rankings, do do have him rated as a four-star and a 237th-ranked prospect. He's a three-star in the composite, which means the other services out there will have to bring him up a bit for him to get that Correct. maybe four-star service uh, there in the, uh, in, in the composite. But the talk behind the scenes, is this somebody who could shoot up the rankings a bit? You know, I don't know. I like, like you said, you know, 24 seven is already higher on him than most other services. You know, we'll see how that plays out, you know, with the fall season. Um, you know, that speed alone is, it's, it's what, uh, you know, a lot of our guys, you know, I even had a piece that was up on swamp 24 seven after, you know, the commitment with Steve Wolfong, Andrew Ivins, who um, covers the Southeast as, as an analyst for 24 seven, they both really like him as a player. They like him a lot higher than the composite. You know, the composite I think is one that you can definitely see him moving up in, in the rankings just because a lot of other guys, you know, ESPN and rivals don't really have him quite so high now. Um, you know, there, there's obviously time for rankings to move up. So, you know, I think that he's a guy that, you know, I could definitely see the composite moving up. I think at this point where we're 24 seven sports has him on their sole rankings. I, you know, I think it's, I think it's a good spot, but I think it's somewhere where, you know, you have a guy like that, that with that kind of speed, you can see how a senior season can really fare for him. But, you know, I, I don't know right now, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised just because, I mean, you've got a guy that's got elite speed like that. You never know how a guy is going to, continue to develop as a senior. So, you know, there's still plenty of time um, you know, for anybody to go get eyes on him for work. And, you know, that that's something that I think will probably, if there was a rankings move, I think it would be something that he would have to put together from his fall season. All right, Blake, let's stay at the wide receiver position and the storylines now at that position. Another Isaiah, Isaiah Horton, top 250, four-star wide receiver from Tennessee, going to be another battle with the big boys here. Uh, Florida's seen great shape at one time here. Is that fading or is it still the case? You know, Florida's still the leader for him, actually. I talked to him 
maybe it was a couple weeks ago. Um, he was planning, he is planning to come on the 1st of June. They're having an event, um, you know, just kind of a visit day because that is the first day uh, where, where recruits can get back on campuses for unofficial visits and, you know, down the road, official visits. Um, so he'll be there in Gainesville for that first visit. Really likes the coaching staff. Um, I believe he's got an official visit to Miami on, um, it's either the, the weekend or the 4th or the 11th. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I mean, he's got an official visit plan there. Um, he's also planning to visit Alabama at some point, like you said, you know, big boy battle there with a lot of these other schools involved with him. Um, Alabama and uh, Miami seem to be kind of those main schools. Tennessee's also in there. Florida has been the leader, I think, for about two months now. He's continued to say that, you know, Florida's still the leader for him. I think that he is one that you can get a good idea how these coaches are from talking to them over FaceTime or Zoom calls or, you know, however, you know, however you can get in touch with someone these days. You know, they, they've done a good job of getting that kind of bond with him through there. Um, but I think he really just wants to take visits. You know, I think a lot of these guys, I mean, it's been a year and a half, you know, of this dead period of keeping these guys, you know, on off of campuses in the traditional way. You know, you've seen some guys that may have taken, you know, a self-guided tour. Or they may stop by for a spring practice or a spring game and sit in the stands. But you know, it's just not the same thing, you know, going and hanging out with the coaches and really getting a good feel for them. So I think a lot of knowing the next step of him with Florida is going to hinge on him getting a chance to get there on the first and getting a chance to hang out with the coaches and, and kind of see if, you know, what they've said and what they've talked to him about and, you know, the bonds they built, you know, over, you know, from afar of, of you know, kind of distanced recruiting, if those still feel the same way when he's there in person. And, you know, I think that Florida has done a good job. And like I said about Isaiah Bond, they've got a, got a lot of guys in the last couple of years of the draft. You know, you've got Van Jefferson, you know, uh, Tyree Cleveland, Josh Hammond, who's on, a, on an NFL roster playing, I believe for the Jaguars, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I mean, even this year, you know, you've got Kyle Pitts, you've got Kadarius Tony. So I think that that really carries a lot of weight with a lot of these kids to where you see see that, you know, that the proof is in the pudding is something that I've heard from a lot of wide receiver recruits over the last, you know, several months, you know, just from kind of seeing, you know, draft boards coming out and those kind of things. So um, I think Florida at this point has a pretty deep board of wide receivers. And I think that, you know, maybe three, four, kind of depending on who it is, you know, just kind of how, how things work out. Numbers are so fluid and, you know, with it still being May, it is early. So I think numbers can always work out, you know, in different scenarios as you move down, you know, just through the cycle. Um, but, you know, Florida's definitely in a great spot for him. And I, like I said, I think a lot of things hinge on that visit, um, getting him back. He will more than likely make a decision sometime late summer, maybe early fall. Like I said, he wants to take some visits. So we'll see how this play out. But, you know, Florida's in a great spot right now heading into those trips. I know one the fans wish Florida would be in a great spot for. Wide receiver Gentry, Gentry Williams looks to be heavily training to Oklahoma. Florida's in the conversation. There are some links there. Um, mm -hmm. But, Blake, probably a tough pull here for the five-star, 36th-ranked player in the country. I think so. You know, he's got a lot of family ties. I believe both of his parents went to Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, they're recruiting him as a defensive back. I've heard that that's the position that he does prefer to play. And of okay. all of his top schools, you know, he's got, I think, eight schools at this point. Um, Florida is the only school that is uh, of his top schools, however many that number is, that is recruiting him at wide receiver. And again, you've got, you know, this, this, this repertoire of, you know, kind of putting up these guys in the draft. And I think that I think that he, you know, while I, while I say he does want to play defensive back, and I think that would be his preferred position, the fact that Florida came to him on a virtual visit and they had a plan for him, they told him how they were going to use him, they showed him, you know, different things that he can do in their offense, what they can do for him off the field, on the field, how they would use him. Having a plan, I think, was the big thing for them to continue to keep them in the mix. I think he's a guy that, yes, while I feel like he wants to play defense, I think he wants to go somewhere where he feels comfortable, he knows what they're going to do with him, and, and it's just not any – any curiosity or any questions heading into different things. So I think that that's what keeps Florida in there. They're recruiting him really hard. You know, I, I think that Oklahoma will be tough to beat, but I think the effort that Florida has put in there, um, you know, is getting them an official visit. He'll be there on June 4th for his official visit. That'll be his first in-person look at Florida. Um, he's talking about unofficially visiting Oklahoma in the summer and then talking about making an official there in the season. So I, while I do think Oklahoma is going to be tough to beat, I do think there's legitimate interest in Florida. I just don't know that it's going to be enough to overcome all those ties he has to the Sooners. All right, Blake, let's stay on the offensive side of the ball. And, look, Gators have put up a whole bunch of numbers there the last couple of years, and that tight end position has been highlighted by Kyle Pitts the last couple of years. Yeah, I hear that guy's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Jaleel Skinner named Florida his leader at one point, then said the schools are even. Is there an update there? And, and would you still put the Gators at the top if you, if you had the list and maybe not go by what he's putting out there so so much? You know, it's hard to really kind of say with that. I mean, you, you, you back up really early in the process. South Carolina was seen as a team to beat. 
then Clemson was in there, then Florida was the leader. Um, you know, and then Florida wasn't the leader, but they're still really high up there. I, I think Florida's in a great spot. Florida State's even getting some buzz now, you know, to kind of talk with him of just being in the mix. I believe he'll take a visit there in the earlier part of June. I think it's the fifth that he's expected, or somewhere around that 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 timeline for him to be there in, at, at FSU for an unofficial visit. Um, Florida's expected to have him on an official visit. I believe it's uh, June 9th um, through the through the 11th because he has a seven on seven event that weekend at IMG Academy. Um, he's going to be, you know, they have a national championship every year that they have there at IMG Academy in Bradenton. So he'll be there that weekend. So he's going to take that official visit to Florida leading up. That's what they're planning out for him to be there right now. Um, I think Florida's in a good spot. I, to me, whenever you have a guy that, you know, has talked about at one point making a decision sometime in early August, but you've got a guy that's just kind of moved his timeline around. You know, he hasn't really quite set in stone anything. He's, he's left the door open there. I think if Florida's using an official visit that early, that tells me that they feel really good of where they stand there. So I like Florida where they're at there. I think that you've got a guy, like you said, in Kyle Pitts, who just went number four in the draft. And not even that, you know, when Kyle Pitts was injured in a couple of those games, Florida still had some production there. You mm -hmm. know, Kimori Gamble had some games that he was there. Keon Zipper had a big game in some of those times when he was out. So I, I think whenever you see that what they've done at that position and continue there, and really there are a lot of similar similarities to what Skinner has done frame-wise. He's just a big body, you know, maybe a little skinny, but could fill out, but he's just got that really big wingspan of what Kyle Pitts had. So I think there are a lot of similarities in their game. I think he's a guy that you could use him, you know, if you want to throw him out as a wide receiver, which is things that Florida has done with Kyle Pitts at sometimes, he's not just your traditional, you know, guy that's going to put his hand in the dirt block and, you know, maybe catch some passes here and there. He's a guy that you can do different things with him. He's a weapon. And I think that those similarities, I think, is something that gives Florida a really good pitch to have to him. Um, we'll see how the official visit goes. I think a guy like him where, you know, like I said, you just seem to have different flavors of the month. You know, you've got different teams that seem to pop in and out. Florida has been a consistent player there, no doubt. But I, I think that that's one where you, let's see how things fare out with some of these visits he takes there in the, in the, in June. I think that he's really looking forward to taking a lot of those visits. But to me, like I said, you know, that's just kind of my opinion, but if Florida's using an official visit that early, that tells me that they feel really good because that's a guy that you could just use one in the fall. If you really felt like you needed to. Yeah. Blake, uh, I'll ask you a question here. I've heard, I've heard these whispers and we just talked wide receivers. We just talked the big pass catching tight end. Oh, maybe, maybe some negative recruiting out there for Florida. Hey, you, there's no Kyle Trask out there anymore. Florida's not going to throw the ball 40 times a game. Their offense is going to go back to what Dan Mullen was doing before uh, Kyle Trask. Does, is that, are you hearing the same thing? Is that out there for maybe some schools that are throwing out there to these big time pass catchers and, and a tight end prospect like Skinner to, to keep him away from Florida and say, look, Dan Mullen didn't throw the ball like that before Kyle Trask. It's just going to go back to the same style quarterback, heavy run offense. You know, I, I, negative recruiting happens. You know, I, I haven't heard anything that's come on my radar, but I think that's just because I'm just so used to, you know, negative recruiting being a thing. Um, you know, nothing that's come up on my radar about, you know, Florida changing their offensive style and, and teams trying to do that. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I mean, that's just how re the recruiting game goes. Man, I mean, if you want to get these kids, man, you got, some of these coaches will pull out all the stops to get some yeah. of these kids in their class. So, you know, while I haven't heard anything for me to, you know, sit there and say like, oh, yeah, you know, I've heard this, that, and the other – I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Surprised, shocked, and surprised. That's me putting them words together. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't be surprised about it, but you know, uh, negative recruiting is just, that's just kind of something that comes with the game. Absolutely, uh, Blake. Perhaps the biggest talent infusion for this team needs to come up front on the offensive line. There are some options there to raise that talent level, led by offensive linemen. You spoke of IMG earlier for um, a tournament they're going to have there, but IMG's Tyler Booker there leading the way as a huge target for the Gators up front. Definitely. I mean, if there's a target for Florida that I, in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of fans even think, I think that's probably the most important target for Florida, which is the fact that you've got a guy that's an elite offensive lineman. I think he's got the size to play guard if you want to start him out there. Um, you know, even early in his career just to get his feet wet. But I think his future, he's a guy that can move over to the tackle position. I've seen him play tackle for IMG Academy. Um, you know, he's just got a mean streak. And I think that that's something when you've got a, a gruff, kind of tough coach in John Hevesy that can take that, you know, that tough coaching. I think that that's what Tyler Booker, I mean, he's coming from a big program like IMG Academy where, you know, you have a lot of guys that are really competing against each other that are high level D one kids. So I think that, uh, I think that 
Florida is in a really good spot heading into that official visit, his official visit slate for the month of June. He'll be there, another guy there on the 4th. Um, I, I've, I've always felt like it's a Florida-Georgia battle. Um, I've heard some talks of Alabama, and, you know, Alabama, I mean, it's, it's Bama's Bama. You know, that's a team that, you know, if they really want to get into a recruitment, it's not hard for them to get in there. They have a pitch. You know, they win a lot of games. So uh, Alabama is always a team you need to keep an eye on. I personally think that it's a Florida Georgia battle. He'll take official visits to both of those. He'll even official visit, uh, you know, Bama, Penn State. I think is another one. Or no, excuse me, Ohio State is another one, and Oregon is another official visit he'll take in June. So he's a guy that I think that you've done. You've just done so many virtual visits. You've done so many conversations with coaches. I think for him, it's it's getting there and experiencing some of these places, spending the you know a couple of days there for an official visit. I think that will be the big telltale for where this recruitment shakes out. You know, so while I feel Florida and Georgia, are, you know, kind of the two bat the two teams battling it out the most right now. That could change with official visits. You know, that could that could be something where he gets there and experiences in person, spends more than just a couple hours because he has taken some visits before the dead period, you know, unofficial visits for junior days or, you know, maybe a practice or a game or, you know, what, whatever it was. But that's not spending an extended period of time there on campus and really seeing what it's like to live there. So I think that those are going to be important for him. All right, Blake. Blake Alderman from Swamp 24-7 joining us right here on Gators Breakdown. And look, it looks like Dan Mullen was trying to – well, I was looking to make a statement back on NFL draft night. He called uh, Las Vegas's Bishop Gorman defensive end Cyrus Moss while he was there at the NFL draft with Kyle Pitts. That lets you know where probably Moss stands in, in importance for this staff and, and Dan Mullen to get a call from the head coach of the University of Florida at the NFL draft. I mean, that's got to say something. That was such a G move. That was so. Whenever he said that, I was like, "Look at Mullen." I think that's like exactly what I said to Cyrus when he told me that. And you know, like he said, that shows that he's a big, important target for Florida. You know, he he's going to play that buck linebacker type position where they can do different things with him. I mean, I've seen this guy play or not play. I've seen clips of him play um, in in a seven on seven setting. He was a guy that was you know seen as kind of a safety type earlier on in the high school career. Continued to grow, continued to fill out, and I don't think he's done growing. You know, I don't I don't think it's necessarily one where he grows into a five technique strong side defensive end type but I think he can going to continue to fill out that frame he's got a really long frame exactly what you look for in those kind of weak side edge rusher types where he's got the long arms to get the quarterback you know really kind of can cover a lot of ground there so um, he's going to take official visits he's going to take his, his five finalists Arizona State Oregon Notre Dame Clemson and Florida he's going to visit those schools Notre Dame Arizona State and uh, Oregon Sometime in the summer for official visits, he's planning to use official visits to Clemson and Florida in the season. He wants to catch a game. But he also said, too, to me recently when I spoke to him that he's probably going to take some unofficial visits in the summer, you know, and he could fit those in. There are no dates for any of these visits yet. He's still kind of in the planning stages of, you know, kind of figuring out visits and whatnot. But, you know, if you can get a guy like that from out west, I always feel like, you know, it's tough to pull a guy from out West whenever you're at Florida, you know, it, it's happened before, not many times, but if you can get a guy there more than once, it, it really does improve your chances. You know, getting a guy there for one time, an official visit out West, it, it's tough. It's really tough. But if you can get him there more than once, you can get him there, you know, two times, I think is, is great. If you can get him more than that, I mean, that's, that's awesome. But I think that if he can get that unofficial visit to Florida, come back with the official later, I definitely feel a lot better about, you know, getting him there more than, more than once, obviously. Oregon is a team that's been seen has been seen as a team to beat, but this is a guy that has just I mean, he's talking about a December, maybe not on the early signing day, but somewhere close to that because he's planning on taking visits late into the fall. So this is a guy that's got plenty of time to figure things out. You know, Oregon is, while it's, they're seen as a team to beat right now, I don't know that it's something that to where you, know, you can go ahead and say, oh, well, he's a lock to Oregon, you know, because he's going to take visits. He's going to listen to pitches. He's going to watch how seasons fare out. One thing he really does like is that Florida's brand can help him off the field from academic standpoint, but also the fact that I, I think the quote he used was that Todd Grantham had told him that, you know, that position that weak side buck position that is you know been uh, the position he's mainly focused in recruiting you know even before he was at Florida just over the course of his career the pitch that Cyrus said was that Florida or excuse me Grantham had told him that that average is about I think 10 sacks a year um, just average over the course of his career so having that you know kind of that pitch there, you know, how they want to use him, the production he's had at that position specifically, I think is something that's keeping Florida in the seat there. And, and, and again, I, I don't really – I don't get up and down and jump and get excited about guys out west, but I do think there is legitimate interest. All right there. And, Blake, we know, man, the numbers in the secondary have been up there the last couple of cycles for the Gators. Uh, the Gators can be pretty selective there uh, when it comes around in, in this class here. 
New coaches come in. I mean, look, the storylines are, are there right now. So new coaches come in. Sam McCall decommits. And there's some big names on the board. Devin Moore, Kamari Wilson, Trey Donaldson. The Gators can be pretty selective here. Those are the players that come to mind here. And the, the, the Gators probably in, in, in good shape as far as, you know, at least being on the radar for a lot of these top targets. Definitely. I think Devin Moore um, is a guy that's – he's – even at the last coaching staff in the in the secondary, he was a top target for them. You know, Dan Mullen was talking to him. Excuse me. Uh, Todd Grantham was talking to him. Torian, you know, all those guys were talking to him. That's continued even with the new coaching staff there that's in the secondary. Alabama is the one offer that when that one came, I was like, mm, this will be interesting. Because like I said before, Alabama is one of those teams that if they want to turn it on, they want to get in the mix and they want they really want to press. They're hard to beat, you know, and I think that that's another guy – um, there was a collection of guys that on on the first round of the draft, Nick Saban was calling guys, you know, whenever Patrick Sertain was getting picked up, you know, that all those kind of first round guys, he was calling guys too. And Devin Moore was one of those guys. And I think that the fact that Alabama has really strong production in the secondary, they're a contender. And if they want to be in that recruitment, I think they're going to be one that's going to be team to watch. Notre Dame is one that was actually had come onto my radar um, yeah. about a month or so ago, you know, our guy, Tom Loy out there who covers Notre Dame actually has a crystal ball prediction in for Notre Dame for Devin Moore. Notre Dame's coaching staff feels confident. I believe he's supposed to visit there. I, I think it's the June 11th weekend. He's supposed to take an official visit there. At this point, I haven't heard any dates for Florida to get him on campus in the month of June. That doesn't mean there isn't one. That just means that I, I suck and I haven't found it yet. So <laughs> I'll continue to continue to look out there and try to find if there are any dates you know, going on there. I think that those three schools are the ones that are the main ones in contention. He has some other schools he's listed, Stanford, Florida State. Um, I, I think that's all the schools that are on his top list right now. But I think that those three of Alabama – Florida and Notre Dame are the main ones right there. I think that's a guy that Florida needs to get on campus, you know, in the month of June because he's one that has talked about making a decision before the start of his senior season sometime in the summer. Hasn't really put out a set date. Um, you know, and you've got Jules Montanar, who's Florida's new cornerbacks coach. Florida's recruiting him. I know he's listed as a safety, and he could probably fill some roles in the safety position, but Florida's actually recruiting him as a cornerback. And Jules actually has a lot of ties to the Naples area. He's a Naples grad himself. I believe he played on the same team as, as Devin's head coach at Naples. So there are some ties there. I just think that Florida that Florida could really stand to get a, lot, a guy like him on campus in the month of June. They have hosted him on campus before in the past, so it's not like he has you know, no experience of Gainesville or you know the Swamp or anything like that. But I think that just staying current is where Florida needs to do there, and getting him on campus will really help with that. Um, you know, Kamari Wilson was another guy you asked about. I just have never even – you know, early on, I felt that, you know, whenever Florida was, you know, really recruiting him under, you know, as an underclassman, they had a guy named Jamar Cheney who was in their recruiting offices. He was an assistant director of player personnel, had coached down there in the area, you know, the Fort Pierce type of area down there, you know, really had a really good relationship with Kamari. And I think when he left, he went to Mississippi State to work as, a, I believe, a grad assistant or, or, you know, more of an on-field type of position up there at Mississippi State. I felt like that was a big connection that was lost there because he has so many ties to Kamari, to the area. And I felt like, you know, then you lose Torian, you lose, you know, Ron English, guys that had been recruiting him, you know, from being an underclassman that he spent a lot of time around. I think that that really did hurt Florida. I think at this point, Georgia is the team in the best position to land him right now. All right, Blake. So there we go. We went through a lot of positions there uh, for the Gators, and the Gators are looking to make a lot of headway coming up in the next month of June. We turned the calendar. I'm busy. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, we just turned the calendar to May, but we're only a few more weeks before we get back to some normalcy, Blake, some some of the recruiting normalcy that we've been missing for over the last year. When the recruiting world and the, and the calendar turns to June, high school recruits will come back in full force to college campuses. And look, Florida's got a lot of events uh, planned out. Our, our summer kickoff, cookouts, first official visit weekend that we've had in over a year. Blake, man, it's about to get crazy for you. I know. I, I said to my buddy the other day when I was telling him, because he's like, you know, so how does the dead period work? You know, what's, what's going on? He was asking me questions about just what it all means, because, you know, I have a lot of friends that are really diehard recruiting people. And I know there are a lot of diehard recruiting fans out there. But then you've got, you know, your casual, you know, really more, of you know, kind of team oriented fans, you know, that, that have talked to me about recruiting. They don't really know much about recruiting. They're more of a, you know, who do we get on signing day? Just tell me who it is. And then and I'll, you know, that that's great for me. They don't yeah. follow the roller coaster through there. So I told him about, you know, what my June is going to tell you. You know, like you said, the summer kickoff on June 1st. They've got other kids that are coming in, you know, different days to just pop in on campus for unofficial visits. And then you've got like, I think, 15, 14 guys there for that first weekend in June for official visits. Then the June 11th weekend, I believe, is also pretty big anyways. 
And then they, they do go down, you know, as the weekends in June go along, just having so many guys on campus collectively at one point. But then summer camp start up. Florida's having a seven on seven at camp. They're having an, an, a, you know, elite camp. I know that's on June 25th. You know, they put the dates out. You know, I mean, they're going to be busy to where I even said to my buddy that was asking me, I was like, man, I, I have to figure out how to clone myself because I don't think I can be in so many different places at once. Like I, I need another me to help me out there. Absolutely, man. And like I said, we, we, we've, um, over the last year, you know, it's all been phone calls and virtual visits and all that. Ace times and zooms. Yeah, now finally foot step step foot on, on back on campus there. Like, uh, of course, you know the um, all the all the guys who didn't get to come in in spring as early enrollees and stuff come back and roll around and, and summertime. The summertime classes are starting, so all the guys are coming back on campus or, or or are coming on campus now who haven't been on campus before. Like, I think we need a refresher, man. Dewan Black, uh, great story there. Finally on campus, he's going to be a Gator. Get to play football for the Gators this fall. Remind us what type of player Florida's getting here as a high school and then transition to JUCO. Played one year there. Uh, are we thinking that star hybrid safety linebacker role for Dewan Black? You know, I think that money linebacker, if I had to give you a home position for him, I think that money linebacker position for Florida, which is a really athletic linebacker position. They want to cover a lot of ground and just kind of show off that athleticism. I think that that would be a home position for me if I had to put him in one. But I think that he is so athletic to where if you wanted to put him in a safety position, if you really wanted to you know, use him in different ways, I think it's completely possible just because he's a guy that, like I said, is just so freaky athletic, um, you know, physical. I mean, you've just seen different clips of him just, you know, kind of buzzing around. I mean, the high energy he brings. Um, six foot three and a half, 226 is what he's listed on his 24-7 sports profile. So he's already coming in with good size. I mean, this is the number one junior college player in the 2021 class that Florida's landed. So it was a highly regarded guy coming out of high school. Um, I was I was really bummed that senior year that he wasn't able to play for Kissimmee Osceola. He was there to focus on his grades. He did play basketball, won a state championship for basketball um, up there for the Cowboys that, that last year of high school for him. I think that linebacker is where his home position will be, but I think that whenever you've got a guy that can be so versatile – and Florida's defense to me seems very flexible to where you've even got guys that you can play in different spots and show off different parts of their game. I think that he's one that fits in really well to their defense. Uh, but one more uh, for our Gators Breakdown Plus member here, uh, Gators 417. He goes, not high school related, but do you know if the Gators are looking at any of the transfers in the transfer portal before the start of the season? Look, the transfer portal is probably not done. There's probably going to be some guys still putting their name in the portal, trying to get somewhere before summer, before fall to get into fall camp here. If there are some guys out there, what positions would be most likely? You know, I think in the defensive secondary position, you know, I think there's some guys that Florida could look at there. There's been some guys from the SEC that have entered the transfer portal recently. The intra-conference SEC rule to where if a guy can play immediately, um, you know, that first year when they get there on campus, I think that that's one thing that's going to be – and that's something that I was told that should be voted on in the month of May. Um, so I think that that's something that could clear up a lot of the questions maybe. Because I, I think if you – I mean, if you're, if you're a guy that's entering the transfer portal and – you have a chance to go play immediately at a school outside of the conference. I, I think that that's the move you make, you know, and I think that that's something that the SEC should probably put into account, but it's also kind of a double-sided coin because if you've got guys that can go and transfer at free will, could that be mass exodus? Could schools, you know, lose a lot of guys and, you know, could, you know, the rich get richer type of thing. You know, if, I mean, if everyone wants to go play at Alabama, you know, why wouldn't, I mean, that's, that's, you know, what's stopping you. So I, I do think that that's one thing and one side of the coin. And the other side is, is, you know, if, if a guy can, you know, wants to transfer in the, and stay in the conference and he's a big time player, but he can't play immediately, well, why would I do that? I can go play at Ohio State or I can go play at Clemson and I can play immediately. So I think that those are the kind of questions that they need to answer there. Personally, I, I think if you want to stay up with the Joneses and you want to continue to keep the best players in the best conference, I think you have to pass that to where players can play in the, in the SEC. Um, I think that, and again, that's something they'll talk about in May. If I had to give you a position that I think is the one that Florida should be the most active with, I think it should be the offensive line. I think when you look at the struggles they've had there, Dylan Gibbons is a guy that I've heard that Florida has some interest in. I believe there is mutual interest there um, coming from Notre Dame. He's an offensive lineman. Um, he was a former three-star guy from, uh, I believe Clearwater. So he's from the state of Florida. A guy from Notre Dame, I mean, you know, big academics there. I think that that's one where Florida makes a lot of sense because 
They've got the SEC. You can put him in a position where he could, you know, make an impact because Florida has had their struggles on the offensive line. But I mean, even if you wanted to be selfish in decision and look at, you know, what they can do for you academically, you know, as far as getting your master's or, you know, different things to that effect, because I believe that he's already graduated from Notre Dame. So I, I think that the Florida makes a lot of sense there. I, I do, like I said, I do, I have heard there's been contact. I have heard there's been mutual interest. So I think he's a guy that Florida should definitely, you know, I, if, again, offensive line is important. I think that that's a guy that makes a lot of sense for Florida. Like I think that's music to Gator fans' ears because as you <laughs> said, Gators need all the help they can get there up front until they prove that they can go and be consistent at, right. at that position. You just throw numbers at it till you till you find me. Look, we we talked right. high school recruiting earlier. Raise the talent level, of course, but also throw numbers at it till you till you get something figured out there on a more consistent level. Right, and you know, for Gibbons, I don't know. That- who the competition would be in that recruitment. But I do know that there is mutual interest for Florida. Um, you know, with just that, I mean, Notre Dame, man, that's the first thing I think with Notre Dame is academic. So I think that that's where it makes a lot of sense for Florida. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's Blake Allerman from Swamp 24-7. Blake, I know, as we said, June's coming up. You'll be busy there. Anything <laughs> in between here and there as far as previews and stuff go, looking ahead to that June June month? You know, I actually put up something that kind of outlines um, it's it's kind of like, a you know, different slides of, you know, days that Florida has camps going on or official visits where I kind of broke down, you know, who to expect just because, I mean, there's just so many guys that are expected there. So I thought that that was kind of a one stop shop to kind of get things together. I'll obviously have different stories of guys kind of previewing official visits or unofficial visits. And I've continued. I have a list that's on a, on the site right now um, for, you know, running list of names that are expected there for that June 1st summer kickoff event. So, I you know, I've added a guy there, Samuel uh, Mbake, I think is his last name. I probably butchered that. Sorry, Samuel. Um He'll be there. He's the newest guy that I added to that list. He's a four-star wide receiver from the state of Georgia. So that list continues to grow as we get closer to June. Official visit list is bananas. I mean, there's guys that are already on there. Um, I've been confirming more names as I get them. So, you know, like I like like we both said, June is going to be crazy, man. And I'm I'm excited because it's coming back. At the same time, I'm nervous because I just – man, i got to be everywhere. <laughs> like It's going to be so busy. It's going to be crazy. But it's going to be exciting because it's been so long of a layoff. Absolutely. All right. That's Blake Gallerman from Swamp 24-7. Everybody go there, 24-7 Sports Network, the Gator site, Swamp 24-7. You can find Blake and Thomas's work, Bob's work there. They do great stuff there at Swamp 24-7. Blake, man, I can't thank you enough for, uh, you know, this great preview of, uh, of the crazy month that's coming ahead. Awesome. I appreciate you having me on. All right. See you later. All right, man. A lot to look forward to in the world of recruiting and never a dull, never a dull moment recruiting either. So usually that, that encompasses when there's, when I say there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation, recruiting, off field storylines, the season, the coaching staff, all that good stuff. It, it encompasses everything, but the recruiting side of it is about to get nuts. As you heard, uh, Blake and I uh, just discussed a lot going on as you know, the world, uh, kind of gets back to, to to normal. Recruiting gets back to normal. With college football slowly coming around uh, to get back what we knew it before pre-pandemic. So uh, exciting times ahead. Hopefully, you know the recruiting, everything goes well there. We get the uh, you know full full swamps um, coming up in the fall. So uh, a lot to look forward to as we shift towards summer and fall. Uh, for the Gators there. So that'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. Once again, thanks to Blake Allerman there. Go find him at Swamp 24-7. I'm the host of Gators Breakdown, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. Guys and girls out there, thanks for listening to this episode of Gators Breakdown.